to come, the great eternal one. Let us pray. We thank you, faithful God, for your faithful intervention in our story. Bringing us back to the Bible is the best thing that can happen. Not only bringing us back, giving us a good light so that we will move from Logo to Rima. An effect of this Rima will make our life a transformed life. Go ahead with us, O oh God, and bless us, and let us have a very stable testimony of our Christian journey. Thank you for having answered. Pray for everyone who will be privileged to be part of this study today. Bless us horizontally and vertically. Amen. That will be useful for you in this kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for having answered. In Jesus' diligent name we have prayed. And amen. amen. I want to welcome all my audience today. Um, coming to the presence of the Lord is a very great opportunity. My prayer to God Almighty is that you will always and all the time be at the center of God's will and fulfillment in Jesus' name. Uh, we are back to study two of the seventh study from the book of Hosea. And you agree with me that this book has been very, very instructive. Last week we were at it, we saw Hosea being one classified as one of the minor prophets. Not minor in terms of anointing but minor in terms of the volume of the book that he wrote. That's what the Bible chronologists uh, considered before it was ranked among the, um, the lower prophet. The anointing is still at the same, the same Jesus, the same God, the same Holy Spirit. May God continue to bless us in Jesus' name. And I want to use this forum also to appreciate those who have made this thing a very good commitment. Uh, you, you are not just watching, you are participating. And um, that makes things to work well and good. Last week we were on our way, so we had to do it online while we are in the vehicle. So, um, but we thank God for the grace that was with us in the vehicle to be able to make things to work quite well. And I want to also appreciate those who went through those questions and they came up precisely. So there's a correction in the last week, um, um, uh, the question on the, how many times does the word Ephraim appears in the Bible, I mean, in the book of um, Hosea, about 37 times. So it's 37 times that the word Ephraim occurred. I've gone through it two, three times after to be able to confirm that. And so please, you will need to move very close to your Bible, not just because they say, we have read so much of daily devotion, daily guidance, daily milk, daily bread, daily whatever. This time around, let's go back to the Bible and be diligent at it. We'll discover that the Bible has so much to say. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Now, on the questions that was posted to us last week, um, we, the question number one was, how many times does the, these names appear throughout the book of Hosea? Uh, the very first one is Israel. The, 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 the name Israel occurred about 44 times. So, mark it and be sure you get it right, 44 times. And then the word Judah occurred about 15 times. Uh, inside that um, book, and then Gilead occurred about two times. So whichever way, you try and see how to look at it very keenly and very closely. One of the reasons why we go into all of this is to draw our attention very close to the Bible, not just reading as a policeman arresting a driver and asking for particular, but for us to look keenly and closely. Why we read, it will make us to discover the depth of God's own Holy Spirit. Um, second question was, how do you understand Hosea chapter 3 verse 4? Hosea chapter 3 verse 4, what does Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 says? It says, 
For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, number without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an effort, and without the therapy. Now, how do you understand this? Now, the word there is only reflecting that Ephraim is disciplined. That they are going to be disciplined, punished. To be many days without a ruler. Of course, a leaderless group is a confused group. A prince. A prince is somebody who will grow up one day to become a king. Meaning that there will be no hope of anything around them. And then there will be no sacrifice. Of course, the issue of sacrifice, the, everybody will just be so confused. There will be no image. According to that uh, Bible passage, of course, you know, it's talking about uh, even idolatrous religion. They, they, everything will be so confused to them that they won't even know where to put themselves. There will be no effort. Now, the one effort is uh, what I call priestly garment. Priestly garment. If you want to know more about effort, you see it in Exodus 25, verse 7. An effort is a priestly garment that the high priest normally wear. That um, the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel are represented on that dress. And it is um, expected to be that it's a combination of all the connections of the anointing and favor upon the children of Israel, upon that effort. Then the other one, he talks about teraphim. The word teraphim occurred only once in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 31, verse 19. Teraphim represents a spirit or a demon. Family idol. Family idol. He said, Israel will be too confused. To have a king, to have a priest, to have a sacrifice, to have an image, to have an effort, to have a teraphim. Confusion will be so much and large around them. And uh, may we never be introduced into a life of confusion in our life in Jesus' name. Now, in chapter 4, verse 6. Now, we, we looked at uh, the question there of um, the... the um, explanation of how we understand chapter 4 verse um, 6 now chapter 4 verse 6 says my people are destroyed for lack of what for lack of knowledge now there uh, because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest unto me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy god and i will also forget thy children now, what does this represent? Now, the word Ephraim means double fruit. Double what? Fruit. And it was used in seven senses in the Bible. Seven senses. The very first one is in Genesis 41, verse 52. Son of Joseph. Another one is in Numbers chapter 1, verse 10. One of the 12 tribes comprising Israel. And then another one is in Joshua 17, 15. Mountains of Samaria. Then there's another one in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 23. A town near Absalom's farm is also called Ephraim. Then there's another one, number five, in 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 6. Battle site between David and Absalom army. That place is also called Ephraim. 2 Samuel 18, 6. There's another one in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 13. Northern Gate at Jerusalem is also referred to as Ephraim. John eleven fifty four, a city near Jerusalem. Now this is what Ephraim represents. Now Ephraim was denounced uh, because of three reasons. Number one, ignorance. Number one, what is number one? Ignorance. And um, he said because of their ignorance, God says he will withdraw his um, commitment to their cause. An ignorant person 
he has not been able to get into where God expects him or her to be until you know you don't know. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, from verse 16. Say, woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, is ignorant. He said, thy princes eat in the morning. What that one is saying is that when a leader is ignorant, God does not use an ignorant fellow to achieve any result. And then, the reason is there, found in Ephesians, um, we come back to the book of Ephesians, because we must allow the Bible to speak for itself. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children, to and tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and by the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So God says he won't make those people his own priest because if they are ignorant, they'll be tossed to and fro. And uh, part of why the ignorant person who is a leader will be tossed is there in Colossians chapter 2 from verse 7 to verse 8. What does that say? He said, beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiment of the world, and not after Christ. Of course, an ignorant leader of any kind can be pushed by philosophy, can be pushed by psychology, and things that are not biblically standard is what they used to push that person against the will of God. Of course, when God called a man, he will give him rule and regulation to operate with. But for somebody who is an ignorant fellow, anybody is right. Nobody is wrong. If somebody says there is no hellfire, he will believe it. If they say there is a, there is a purgatory, he will believe it. All manner of lying and deceit. And that's why Ephraim was denounced because of ignorance. So for God not to denounce you as a believer, it's your duty to know. Know the word of God. A, 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 a particular lawyer that goes into court, Without the knowledge of constitution, he's only going there to go and uh, uh, fool himself. Your only constitution is the word of God, and you must know it inside out. Don't be ignorant. The second thing, uh, why God um, made uh, Ephraim to be denounced is because of idolatry. Chapter 4, verse 12, verse 13, and verse 17. Idolatry. Morality, chapter 5, verse 3. How do you understand play harlots, adultery, and sacrifice with court prostitutes? Are a people without understanding. Anyone, either a priest or a laity, either member of the church or somebody who is an active person in church, those who play harlots, adultery, and sacrifice with court prostitutes, they are a people without understanding. He said they will come to ruin. They shall come to ruin. That's why he said you must need to have understanding. Now, shooting your bullet on a dead horse is a waste of time. Therefore, let our heart be stable in God. God is enough to take us right. Now, in the study tonight, is the second study from the book of Hosea. And the title of what we are studying is A Grieving Husband and His Grievous Wife. A Grieving Husband and His Grievous Wife. I've told us that the book of Hosea is like um, a demo um, about the nation of Israel. And then again, it's only when we say a grieving husband, it means a deep sorrowful husband, a mournful husband, and his uh, grievous wife. The word grievous there is a woman that brings great suffering, that brings so trouble, that, that brings a, a, a type of uh, uh, infirmity, trouble, bring trouble. Now, 
grieving husband was Hosea. And the woman, Goma, was a harlot before marriage. And an adulterer, adulteress after marriage. Every effort that the husband was trying to use to bring the woman back, waywardness would not allow that woman to come back to line. This is a, a, a picture of Jesus Christ and his church. A picture of Jesus Christ and what? And his church. Jesus represents Hosea there. His church, they are grievous. Of course, Satan has determined at this end time to use some too powerful weapons to wreck the church of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will not be among those who will be wrecked. Amen. One among those instruments is the fashion, um, fashion, spirit of fashion and technology. Fashion and technology. That is instrument that Satan is using to attack, to bring in distraction unto the church of Jesus Christ. That does not mean that you should not wear dress. But if all your attention has always been latest fashion and fashion, then you may be that goma that the Bible is talking about. Every new design, even when you cannot afford, because you see it at the neck of somebody, you are pushing yourself and pressing your husband, you want the same thing. Oh God, I just want to buy a helicopter. I want to buy aircraft. Why do you want an aircraft? Uh, it's just simply because uh, everybody is buying aircraft. Uh, well, and Jesus will ask, why? Tell me the reason. Is it because of the appointment you have in Bariga? That you cannot use vehicle to go there? No, I just want them to know I'm serving a big God. All these are wrong reasons that people are using to serve God. And that's why it has been described with different, different names. In chapter 4, verse 16, it was described as a stubborn heifer. Basleading Apha. In chapter 7, verse 4, it was also des de described as Baker's heated oven, meaning that they are, they are warm up for wrong things. But when it comes to the right thing, they are distracted, they are not focused. And then again, in chapter 7, verse 8, they are, they are not torn. Half baked cake. That is the picture of the wine of Jesus Christ. A lot of half-baked people. And then 7 verse 11. He also called them, many of them are, are silly doves. They are without sense. Spiritual common sense. To know what they should know and do what they should do. And then in chapter 7 verse 16, he also described them as crooked bows. When a bow is crooked, it means that even if you throw it at, at a, a particular animal to kill, it cannot. Crooked ways. Then in chapter 8, verse 8, you call it a useless vessel. Vessel that cannot retain any godliness. These are the picture of the wife of Jesus Christ today. Try to move yourself away from the multitude that are silly in their understanding. Move yourself away from those who are stubborn and backsliding and they enjoy going back away from God. Move away from those who are heated by the heat of sin. Move away from those people who are half-baked, who refuses to be touched on all sides of their life. You must be useful. Don't be a useless member in the body of Christ. Never be. Wherever you are, you must be active. Everything around you must show active participation. Others may be careless. It should not be you. Chapter 8, verse 9, you also call it uh, a wandering and lonely wild animal, very so solo in whatever they do, very solo and wild. They only try to mask their wild character under a very good uh, smile, but when the, the real thing comes, you will see the wild behavior. This is the wife that Jesus says is marrying. Chapter 9, verse 15, he said their, their roots are dried up. Their roots are dried up. Chapter 10, verse 1, it says they are selfish. They are what? Selfish. Therefore, move away from selfishness so that your testimony can be great. Move away from selfish life. 
do not be a distracted bond. You must also be heated for God and be active for God. Therefore, as we are considering this, husband that is sad, wife that is wayward, then there are there some attempts that Osia the prophet tried to use to save his marriage. Because there's a marriage relationship between Jesus Christ and his church. Now, the same way Hosea got married to a wayward woman, there were three things that Hosea did to save his marriage. Number one is that he, he barred Goma from the market of the world. He tried to buy Goma, to stop Goma. Don't go to the market of the world. The worldly standard should not be your focus. That was what the husband was trying to do. Why was this? In 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, because things like this are no longer mentioned again. Because of trying to cope with the latest, trying to cope with what people will say, a lot of people have been annoying their, 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 their maker. In chapter, 1 John chapter 5, from verse 19, what does he say? He says, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. <laughs> Osea was trying to say the wife should not go into the world, wicked world. He says, and we know that the Son of God is come. And has given us an understanding, we are not silly, <laughs> that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from what? I from idols. You know, some people have idols. Some have idols in football, idols in business, idols of different kinds. They are no longer looking at the side of Jesus to be their focus. And that's why in the book of that same John, 1 first, uh, first John chapter 2, uh, from um, verse, um, verse 14, he says something there. He says, I have written unto you fathers, chapter 2, verse 14, because ye know him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. Meaning that any worldly distraction in you, how will I know? It's a very simple way to know whether you have the measurement of the world inside of you. The junction where the things of God meet with the things of men. Whoever wins that time is a sign of what is in you. So we must need to watch and do not allow. That does not say you should not do what, you know, wear good dress, use fine cars, build good houses. But if you are doing it for things that are not for godly intention. I know some people, they have so much houses and not by the time they are dead, that house became source of combat among their children and those children begin to kill themselves. That does not mean you should not do it, but all we are saying is, have treasure in the kingdom of God. Don't just be somebody who is only focused and investing upon the carnal world alone. That will not pay you. Point number two that Osea did to save his marriage was that he tried to buy her out of the market of the world. Try to buy the, the woman. Because the woman just forced herself to enter into the market where I want to go and do something. I want to, everybody is entering there and then the wife of Osea has put her head to be there. And the man was trying to make effort over that woman. What was the same step there? Um, in uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15 from verse 13. What does that say? It says in there, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for who? His For his friends. What that one is saying in effect, 
is that Jesus Christ has laid down his life for us because we are who? His friends. If you belong to the Lord, don't suffer Christ. Don't make him to be sad by not looking at his side. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 6 and verse 7. He says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. He made us to be accepted in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. What is it that Christ has not done? To be able to save us and rescue us. But some people, they only love Jesus in mouth when the real thing comes. They throw Jesus overboard. And Jesus has been trying to buy us away from waywardness of the world, but the pressure and the taste of the world does not allow so much wife of Christ to look into his direction. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 4. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he may deliver us from this present evil world. Because of the present world that some people are running away from, the Bible calls it evil world. According to the will of God, our Father, what that one is saying in verse 5, to him be glory forever and ever. Some didn't know that the present world is evil. They'll be laughing with you, but they are plotting, plotting your downfall. They'll be saying you are the best around, and yet, when they move away from you, they, they slice you, they razor you down. Evil world. And this is a world that will be doing evil against you, and they'll be smiling with you. And that's why Christ's effort is to save us, to buy us out of the market of the world. The last one before we finish today is that at the end of the day, Osia now told the son, go and reason with your mother. Go and reason with who? Your mother. I have made every effort I know to rescue her, your mom, my wife, away from waywardness and grieving me. Go and have an in, I mean, relationship with your mother. Discuss. Reason with your mom. Revelations chapter 2. The book of Revelation chapter 2. Readings will be from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2. Reading from verse 4. What does that say? Nevertheless, I have something against you. Because you have left your first love. The love you love God with. You know before, when it is the time of God, nothing stops you. You know before, when it is the time of prayer, nothing stops you. But nowadays, the first love is flying out. You have left your first love, remember. Therefore, from where you are falling, and repent, and do the first works. You know when you are born again newly? Even if other people are not doing it, even though you are an usher, and nobody is there to clean the altar, you will carry your broom and do it. But nowadays, ah, you are already bigger than cleaning the altar. How can a whole big woman like you clean the altar of God? You are leaving your first love. Saying, if they cannot do it, let's leave it like that. Remember, therefore, from where you are falling, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. You know what I want to say? Repentance is key. Anyone who wants to be the true um, bride of Christ must be willing to repent and change habit and attitude to that which is suitable. Isaiah chapter 1. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1. Don't forget, this is a Bible study. And you must need to know what the Bible is saying. Bible is meant to interpret Bible under our ears. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 18. Come now. The same language that Osia was trying to transmit to the wife. Come now. Let us reason together. Says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. He says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. See, how is the fruitful city become an island? How? It was full of judgment, righteousness, lodge in it, but now murderers. Is this not the thing that some people want to kill themselves for? The city of murderers. All we are saying here is that your relationship with God should be stronger, should be happier, should be holier. You must learn to do the right without you being pushed. How long ago have you prayed for somebody else, apart from your family members? How long ago have you thought about what to do about kingdom of God away from what anybody is seeing? Will you be willing to sponsor the work of God without anybody knowing you are behind it? Or you just want everybody to clap for you because you are the one who did it? That should not be the story around you. Summarily put today, all we are saying is that story of Osea is a story of, the, of Jesus Christ and story of Goma is the story of the church. Each of the children that are born into the kingdom of God, we are supposed to love God. We are supposed to be able to do the will of God. It is old car that needs to be pushed before the thing can work. If you are not an old car, can you start and move in the direction of God? So many people in this adulterous, wicked city called the world, they are no longer looking into the direction of God. If other refuses to, you must not. Only a dead fish that floats. Living fish, they don't float. The world is the world of murderers. You must not allow murderous thoughts, satanic injected thoughts, to bewitch your knowledge. Read the word of God and do the will of God as a light in the world. This is the study from the book of Osea. May God bless you. May God lead you. May God inspire you in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we pray, following as what we are going to work upon against next week, before we conclude from the book of Hosea. Question number one. From the book of Hosea, identify five mistakes of Israel. We have asked how many times the word Israel occurred. So you want to see how many mistakes that Israel make. What was the representative of those mistakes and Ephraim, Israel and Ephraim, you want to discover five five mistakes according to the Bible. Question number two: How do you understand Osea chapter ten, verse twelve? Osea chapter ten, verse twelve. Question number three: What are three helpful ways out? In the book, in that book of Hosea, for both Israel and Ephraim, what are three helpful ways? How can they come out from the mistakes that they have, been, they have locked themselves in? You identify five mistakes from each of them, and then the solution will only be three. Three solutions. Then the last one. The word sacrifice occurred how many times in the book of Hosea? The word sacrifice occurred how many times in the book of Hosea? Now, this is what is available for us carefully today. And I do believe that what we have learned is there to help us better. Can we pray now? Or you will still need some information around it. From the book of Hosea, identify five mistakes of Israel and Ephraim. Two, how do you understand Osea chapter 10 verse 12? Three, what are three helpful ways out in the book for both Israel and Ephraim? The last question, the word sacrifice occurred how many times in that book of Osea? Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you today. We pledge our support for you, Lord Help us to be at the center of your purpose. Don't allow our way to be at variance against you. As you are loving us, give us grace to reciprocate. We refuse to be wayward. We refuse to go into the world. We refuse to miss away from 
original intention with which you got married to us. Save us and deliver us from the wickedness of the end time. Murderers will not succeed over our destiny. I pray for all my audience today. May the Lord bless you. Your best testimony will show forth. You will do the will of God even though, even though no one else joins you. I will do the will of God even though no one else joins me. Let this decision and desire be great in our heart. Bless everyone and heal everyone that is sick. Thank you, faithful Father. Let your word resurrect our spirit man. No one will be bewitched in our understanding. We will follow after the word of God and our life will be very stable forever. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' decent name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. amen. For those who are sending their offerings, online I pray the blessings of God will rest upon you. Heaven will look into your direction. You will never have regret. No reproach for you. God bless you financially. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' provisional name, we are praying. Amen and amen. God bless you and bless your family in the name of Jesus Christ. So, this is the story around the study tonight. When you read through the Bible, one good thing we try to register our mind with is that we read it keenly. You may not get the number. You may get it right. But all we are trying to do is to make you to focus upon the Bible properly. Instead of us to just close on the page of the Bible, not really knowing what the Bible says, and that is exactly why we are doing whatever we are doing. May the Lord bless you and bless every member of your family. Till we meet again next week, stay in the hands of God, and the hand of the Lord be with you. So today, I hope you still remember, the victory night is coming up this night. Um, by 11 o'clock to 11.30, we are going to have communion service. From 11 o'clock to 11.30, you are going to prepare your wine and your bread. That bread is not the regular one with yeast. It must have to be the regular bread that is without yeast. And um, I believe the one you used last month, you should be able to have the clearer understanding about that. Then the uh, victory night proper is going to start from 11.30 to 12.30 today. So prepare yourself for it. Go and sleep. Rest so that you can be active. From 11 o'clock, we are starting the um, communion service. 11 o'clock sharp till 11.30. When it is 11.30, we are picking up the, uh, the, the victory night proper on, I hope you already have it, the thing that was sent to you on um, timely family prayers. Timely family prayer. Please, can you send that to some of your friends? They must join us today. If you must need to be with us either on Zoom or on Facebook, prepare yourself. And the Lord Almighty will stand by you. You will not regret over your family in the name of Jesus Christ. There are mysterious things that God has revealed. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you are going to beat every traffic of evil in your lineage. And your star will be there forever without disgrace in the name of Jesus Christ. Till we meet again, 11 o'clock today, be in the hand of the Lord. God loves you and loves you all the time. Reciprocate your love by being committed to his work. Thank you. God bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you.